welcome to Pipe and Tamper. I'm playing Jay's favorite song. Uh, this is episode 139. I'm Mike, your host, and joining me, like he always does, is Master of Pipes nominee and winner, though the ceremony has yet to uh, take place, Jay Furman. Hello, Jay Furman. I can't wait for my chicken dinner. <laughs> is it, wait, you get a free dinner because you've been, you, you, you've you won the nomination? I get a free dinner. Nice, nice. I get a free dinner, Jay says. <laughs> also in the studio uh, for the second time, actually, a pipe maker, pipe retailer, and pipe manufacturer, facility owner, Pete Prevost. Welcome back, Pete. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Go absolutely. Nice to be back. Absolutely. It's been, Pete, we last talked, we, we've seen each other at pipe shows, but uh, we last talked on the podcast in june of 2019 it's been five years wow yeah that was episode lots, lots changed uh, dude a ton has changed and 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 i and i broke a golden rule of mine um justice music here i broke a golden rule of mine it's never to listen back t- to the podcast that i have recorded um but I listened to our interview last night. I fast forwarded through all the garbage. Listened to our he interview. Fast forwarded through you so you could hear himself. No, <laughs> a tremendous. He fast inter- forwarded through all of my parts. No, oh I my did God. not. That's the only part I'll I listened. I'll tell you what hasn't changed since 2019. You're still smoking a pipe, and yet he isn't. I'm not smoking a pipe right now. I have in front of me though this right here. It's it's great that you've got the tobacco in the pipe right there. I you don't have the pipe together. And like, it's nice to have a a. a Pipe podcast. Oh, Pete's got some where? too. That's the Palmetto Balkan uh, 2024 edition, and Jay's trying to find his. My milkshakes he... bring all the way. To the <laughs> and I, and I got this in front of me as well. I just got these uh, Eleanor Rose cigars. Oh, nice. Oh, those are so good. Um, let's move right into this. We're gonna we're gonna dig in, dig into. Uh, Pete and the segments we have set up for him. Uh, I do want to say that uh, because I broke the golden rule of me listening back to older episodes, they're super cringy. Um, The interview, though, is, in my opinion, and I'm going to pat myself on the back, the absolute best interview available with Pete Prevost. It's a good interview, Pete. And not because of me, because you are a very talkative, knowledgeable guy with... A super interesting uh, background. You're from Bakersfield, the carrot capital of the world. <laughs> you're you're uh, Wait, is an that award- really a thing? It is, dude. And you're an award winning uh, musician. Yeah, I think I, I you're from the carrot capital of the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little you're mini. The wow. carrot was uh, invented. Yeah. No. Yep, it sure was. Don't get me started on carrot talk. <laughs> is, is is that like the the. You have like a carrot museum there and everything? No, well, no, they grow carrots. The, they got, the brief, the brief summary is: is there, is there, there a are, giant carrot, you know, contest? Is, there's a lot of there? there's a lot of carrot farmers out there, and there's a few leading carrot farmers that produce a lot, and I mean a lot of the carrots. That Jay, when the, the, Jay, the next time you or your wife you go to uh, the supermarket to buy a bag of a little baby carrots, just look to see where it's from. It'll be from Bakersfield, dude. I'll have to ask Mike and Molly. I get them for them all the time. Oh, there you go. Anyway, let's move into Maybe show. Bakersfield or San, Juan, San Joaquin Valley. It'll say right. one of those two things. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Let's go ahead and move into show and tell. This is where we show any new personal pipes we've picked up since last recording. Since there is a YouTube component to this podcast, we generally share something here, but it's not necessary. Pete, any new pipes as of late? And if not, did you bring anything maybe you can show that you're working on for Chicago? I I actually do have a new pipe. Nice. Um, I When we just had our Mule Town show, I picked up one of these uh, – these little clays, the Clarin, I think is the brand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, these are cool. Is, is the new ones pipe. listed on smoking pipes? Is there yes, no is there yes. no stem on that? There's no. The, it's just straight. You, you don't you don't need a stem for a pipe. But um, it's man, it is a cool. It's a cool little pipe, little Canadian. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty into that. Uh, I also I have started. Uh, making pipes for Chicago. So literally I started um, about an hour before this podcast. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I shaped out a couple things. Oh, a little, t- little tiny one. Oh, the little ones yeah. again. 
Yeah. Wait. So now, well, now, are you making those for the show, or are you just practicing for the the battle? Don't 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 answer, that, don't answer that yet. Don't answer that yet. We we will talk um, about that. No, but I, I am actually working on making some. For that's the show. a that's like a little curved Dublin, isn't it? Yeah. I, this is like I like it. Evolved a little bit over time. The mm-hmm. shape, but. And I've done really big ones. Well, this is a small one, but I've done really large ones too with a long shank. And I, I call it a long shank sitter, but like that's not a very long shank. That's a small pipe, but right. it's just the general name of the of the pipe. And so. that that little one looked to be like maybe a little tomato. This little tomato. It's a little is, tiny thing. That's fun. like a Neil Osborne's going to buy that. It's right. super squatty. Um, I've I've done several of these. I don't like to waste briar. So a lot of times you get this little like cut off piece where it's, you need to cut a chunk off the top or something. I love to use those, those little slices of, well, you had those I in can Vegas. still make a pipe out. Yeah. yeah. I had those in Vegas too. I remember. Yeah. So I, I just don't, I like to maximize briar as much as I can. So if I can yeah. get two or three pipes out of one block and not waste any, that's what I'm going to do. I hear you. What about you, Jay? Anything new to share? I think you have a couple, right? Yeah, actually, uh, Nathan Archer, you know, started uh, making pipes a little while ago. You know, like everybody else, he started with just, you know, a block and then plasticating or whatever. So I told him when he starts to make his own stems, I want the first piece he makes with his own stem. And I wasn't taking those other two until he came up with uh, a logo for himself. So this is the first one he made uh, the stem for. And it had a a flaw in in the briar itself. But I still need it because it's the first stem that he carved himself. So this is the second one that he made. And he was using pre-made stems, obviously, before that. So Correct. Yeah. But, you know, he got, you know, better, more progressed. And, and that's what he chose to do. Uh, but you, one of the you, things I was been real- buying pipes from him for some time now, right? Say it again. You've been buying pipes from him for some time. No, now. no, I I only have two of his that he did before okay. you know, when he first started. But I wanted, you know, if he was going to continue... I wanted them to have a stamp on them. So I wasn't taking anything until he had a stamp of his own. And when he decided to start cutting his own stems, I wanted the first one. And he reached out to me. That's probably a year and a half ago and said, he did it. This is it. So, but what I was really interested in knowing is when he, when I got the two was the dimensions of the bit on the stems Mm -hmm. are identical, Okay, which I think is really important for a maker. Sure. Um, because I know when he makes a stem, when he makes a pipe, it's going to all fit the same. So that's why it's important to you, because obviously you like the way he makes stems and, and bits. And Yeah. I mean, it's a little thicker than, you know, other ones that I have. Mm-hmm. But these are perfect clenching pipes. Okay. You know, it's enough there for me to hold on to while I'm doing anything. Anything else? That's it. What do you, what do you got? I, I've, I'm not. You're going to show us another Radici? Uh, no, I haven't purchased any pipes since we last recorded, which was the Neil Monier I got at the LA Pipe Club meetup. So I have absolutely nothing to share today. Wow. I was going to share that Palmetto and then the, the cigars, but I kind of already showed you're those. A, you're a slacker. I am a slacker. I'm not Palmetto's really. Palmetto's good, right? Do you like it? I, You know, I haven't opened up. The, t- the tent yet. Oh, yeah. Wow. You got, oh, yeah. You've been going to smoke. I got you. He, he's not going <laughs> to actually smoke it. Well, I, this, is, I, this is my second bowl. I love the 22, uh, 2022 it. edition, so I haven't, but I haven't tried this yeah. one yet. Now, that's the, the new one, right, Pete? Yes, this is the new one. Yeah. yeah. So I have the 22, and, and I have the new 24. Uh, the 22, you know, it's only been a couple of years, but it, it, it really has aged or mellowed out a little bit which I really like the new one is actually actually as the 22 is today. And oh, interesting the process of the Latakia. Interesting because Did, the, are, the 24 has the Latakia that has that new sustainable, you know, process in Turkey. These specially processed Latakia are the components the same, Jay. I, I didn't know. Components look. are identical because this one's except got the, for the except for identical. Okay. Except for the process of the Latakia. Right. That has changed, obviously. Yeah. This one, the right. new one has 2018 Izmir, 2019 Bosma, Carolina, Red Virginias, and that specially processed Latakia. Yeah. They used to burn up acres and acres and acres of trees to process Latakia. Yeah. Uh, 
now it's being done in a completely different way. Anyway, we were going to feature this in housekeeping, but I decided not to because um, when we're, we're featuring it now. I'll, anyway, because it's all sold out. So, uh, and unless Jay and I decide to review it in a Taster's Choice episode, that's probably the last time we'll talk about it. I mean, unless you There'll follow us There'll be brick and mortars that have it. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, but- like Briarworks. Like Briarworks. <laughs> hey, yeah. Pete managed to get his, his his hands on a couple extra tins, I would imagine. Yeah, we've we've got some. Then, and, and, and I'll admit, there is a, a blend from Briarworks that I have to try. I've been meaning to try for forever, and I haven't. Is and, it is know. it called Pete's Beard? No. No, no, no. There is a Pete's it, Beard uh uh English yeah, blend. Pete's Beard's blend. I don't yeah. know if you guys still make it, it, that, Pete, but it's it's the bacon old fashioned. Oh, stop it! It's a po- it's a polarizing. Hey, what's blend. your problem? <laughs> I, you know what? I I, I I'm going to stop saying I'm never going to smoke that until I at least try it. So that I have- make sure to bring some to Chicago, Pete, so Jake can try it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I will. I think everybody should give it a try, whether they're going to love it or hate it, because it's going to be one or the other. You're going to love it or you're going to hate it. Uh, Jay, much. who was it? The that's, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Pete. That's pretty much the only – no, that's all right. That's the only response we typically get. It's either people think it's the worst thing they've ever or had. The, or the best. Or thing. they actually enjoy it. And that's just because I think a lot of people – we probably should have called it like smoky old fashioned or something. I mean, we were really, were trying to figure out how we could get the real bacony kind of thing. Yeah. You took a serious um, approach there, to it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we did. And, um, I think it's really good. It's just, it's definitely a, um, it's got a unique taste to it. It's different than anything I've ever smoked. It's got, you know, the sort of boozy component, but then like with all the dark fired, and it's got a high nicotine content too, so it it'll kind of make your head buzz a little bit. To be there. honest, it's, I'm it's sold. good stuff. I'm sold. Send me some. Hey Jay, who was it that smoke, brought? I used to smoke three packs a day. It takes a lot for me to you know yeah. get a buzz off. Jay, uh, I forget who it was, but who was it that brought the PB and J blend to to Vegas? Uh, that was we put that together. It was me and uh, Anthony from uh, oh. uh, Peculiar Pipe. That, that's right. That's right. And you all smoked that yeah. too, right? Yeah, we put that together. That we used uh, Wilkie uh, peanut butter, uh, the Captain Black grape, and we threw some 2012 Full Virginia Flake into it to kind of <laughs> bring it together. Captain Black grape. That's so funny. How did it smoke, by the way? It, you know, it wasn't terrible. Uh, but it wasn't it good. Needed, but it wasn't good. <laughs> That's funny. All right, guys, let's move on to housekeeping, uh, which we have just one one item, really. Jay's nomination to the yearly doctor slash master of pipe ceremonies at the Chicago Pipe Show this year. Uh, this is a distinguished list of guys and gals, either on the business side of things or on the hobby side. Jay is being recognized as the latter. And I believe candidates need to have a minimum of, of 20 years in the hobby and demonstrate a strong commitment, as Jay has an advancement uh, in the pipe and tobacco hobby or industry in order to be recognized or considered. That said, if you're new to the hobby and you think you're doing it justice, you probably are. You just won't be recognized as a doctor or master until you're old and 20 years have gone by. Right, Jay? I, yeah, you're making me feel real old now, but yeah. Well, it's because you are. Anyway, Jay, I'm, I'm proud and honored to, to have you as my co-host here on the Pipe and Tamper. And uh, Thanks, huge man. congratulations I, for I'm, this I'm, achievement. I'm still buddy. very humbled by the whole thing, if you want to know the truth. I mean, yeah. I know it's a great honor, and, but I'm still humbled by it because I, I really don't believe I do any more than anybody else does. You know, I take pictures and I post them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you clearly do more than that or they wouldn't have that particular person wouldn't have nominated you. And and the panel of uh, previous master and doctors would not have almost unanimously voted you in as um, as a winner. So congratulations. Thank you. Nice done. Nice Pete, done. Pete, your turn's coming. Just give it time, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> give, it, give it time. Pete, you got to take more pictures. <laughs> you got to take more pictures. I don't take enough pictures. That's the trick, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to play this bumper music here, and then we'll roll into our main topic featuring Pete Prevost. Do you have to? I do have to. Playing a bumper. 
bumper makes it sound like we're somewhat professional. I, that's just my opinion. So that we should just play the bumper from beginning to end. Hey, bud, what's your problem? <laughs> so, so, so I want to get Pete back on the show for a couple of different reasons. Um, one, it's been five years since he was on last. Two, we're going to talk about the Mule Town Pipe Show a bit. You know, the ups and downs of it all. Three, prepping for Chicago, which is just two weeks away, Pete. Um, and uh, four, 2024's Battle of the Briar. Um, let's move right to Mule Town. And, and again, I want to I want to say if if you if you're interested more in Pete and Pete's background, listen to I think I said it was episode 43 of Pipe and Tamper. The interview is fantastic because Pete has got an interesting background and he contributes a lot to our hobby. Let's talk about uh, Mule Town Pipe Show first and um, how did that pipe show begin i mean you got the facility and i think you guys just celebrated your your 10 year anniversary last year if i'm not mistaken pete you have the facility right and then take us back to the initial thought process of hey let's start our own pipe show we, we have a place here that would be perfect for it how can we make it happen yeah you know so when we started in nashville back in 2013 mm -hmm. um <clears throat> we were there for a few years and then um in 2017, that's when I started looking at moving us to Columbia. And part of the reason I really wanted to get into the building that we ended up getting in was because it just had this big open space. It was a cool building. And I thought, man, this would be a great place for us to eventually maybe host our own pipe show. Um, but we jumped right into it, actually. I mean, we got into the building in early 2018 and then, um, we got the store open, the bar that was like end of 2018. And then I was talking to a friend of mine here about how we wanted to do our own pipe show and he's put on events and stuff. And he just said, you just need to set a date, you know, just set a date for it, commit to it. And then you don't have a choice. Then you just have to get everything done. <laughs> so, yeah. so we, so that's what we did. We set a date, we got uh, artwork and a flyer made and we put the uh, the save the date out there and just committed to doing it. Was and, the uh, first show in 2019 or 2018? It was in 2019, but it was in the fall it, or like in late summer, early fall. Yeah, the dates have changed. Um, yeah. And frankly, a big part of the reason we changed the dates um, was because we have this this factory space back here. It's an old warehouse building. It's very, it's pretty big space, but we don't have like proper air conditioning and stuff. And so that first show, it, it was pretty hot. I mean, we had the doors all open and nobody really griped or complained, but you know, that was the one comment we got from everybody it was like, it's a little warm back there. So um, we were going to do it in 20 and then we canceled it. And then we said, okay, let's do it in 21. And then we, ended up canceling that one but because we decided to move it to the spring. And then so 22 was the next one that we did and it was in March. So the last, you know, three pipe shows have been in March. Yeah. And, um, much, you know, cool, much cooler it, weather, more I mean, comfortable. Just, yeah. Yeah. Much better weather. Um, but a big part of just wanting to do the show from the beginning was, you know, we, we feel like we're a small, you know, pipe factory, you know, we're not a large pipe factory. We go to a lot of pipe shows. We're pretty well connected in the community. And we really just wanted to put on an event like in the Southeast of the country here that would just be, um, you know, we thought we had a cool space for it, but sort of our contribution to the pipe collecting community. And each year it is just growing like crazy. And this most recent one that we just did um, it kind of it kind of blew last year's out of the water in terms of attendance. I couldn't believe it, but mm -hmm. um, we were we were blown away. Honestly, we had the final numbers ended up being um, paid tickets to get in was five hundred and nineteen. Holy crap! And then yeah. yeah, and then we had about sixty plus people amongst the vendors. So we were we were right around close to six hundred people. Um, That's extremely if successful. Show, if it was any show, I had FOMO over. And and sorry, I never made. It's it's the Mule Town show. I think, and that's that's what keeps happening is 
um, little by little people are like, that's, that sounds like fun. I should have gone to that. And then they, and then they come the next year and then it's just continued to grow to the point where I don't know exactly what we're going to do in future shows. Yet. Yeah. Right? We're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to change the space because that's part of the magic. It's yeah. that's the charm. Is yeah. we got the bar up front, we got the factory. Yeah. Are you worried about outgrowing the space? It sounds like maybe you are a little bit. We're we're already busting at the seams, honestly. Um, because here's the thing we we have a pretty good size space back here, but we we can't put the kind of vendor um, uh, tables in that like a lot of the other shows do. So we've only got enough space back here for you know about thirty five vendor tables. But that's the best part about the show to me is like you've got a good mix of different vendors and then a lot of people that are here to shop. And so the show has gone really well for every vendor I've talked to said it's one of the best shows they've ever done because of that reason. I I talked to Brian briefly some time back about uh, because the Vegas show has grown, as you know, not only since Brian and Dave has started managing that uh, it it's grown and it, I'm a little hesitant to say that's probably going to, or it's about to outgrow its space that it's in. But in talking with Brian, Brian says, no, we're, we're in a great space. Las Vegas is a perfect sh- uh, place to have a pipe show. Cause you can smoke on the floor. He doesn't want to give that up and looking for a bigger space just creates more headaches. And I would assume you're probably on that same page. And it, you know, it's very intimate because you own Briar works and this is, you go here every single day to do your job and, um, finding another place just, I don't think it would make sense just because you have so many people attending. You just kind of have to go with what you have. I, I think it's, I think it's totally fine. I think that there may be a point where we have to limit the number of tickets. I mean, we'll see right now. We, we don't have to do that yet. Um, and we, we have some space that we could expand a little bit. Like we could do like a tent out back behind the building or, in the parking lot next to us and like have some spillover areas. But ultimately um, I think the space is part of the charm of the pipe show. Exactly. It's such a good atmosphere and it's just different. Um, I love, I mean, I love the other pipe shows. I I go to several of them and, but there's just something different about this one. That's just got its own thing, which is, which is really fun. And, and, the town of Columbia is really cool. I mean, it's just south of Nashville. And I think that's the thing that surprises people the most is how much they fall in love with this little city here when they come to visit. So, so where did the name Mule Town come from? Is it like a district in which you're located? Cause I've often wondered about that. And I can't recall yeah, um, whether or not I asked that when we talked five years ago. Yeah, so Mule Town is the nickname of Columbia. Mm. So the town, it's the it's the town's nickname. And actually, we're about to go into um, this next week is a a whole week of events in the city of Columbia called Mule Day. Mm. It's this is an event that's been going on since the 1800s. Basically, it's a big agriculture farm farming area, and this became sort of an annual um, breeders day for mules and like auction and all this stuff, which then turned into like a parade and like a week long, you know, fair and like events and all this stuff. So this is a big event that people come in from all around this area to to go to and have for, for 150 years or something like that. I can't remember how many years they've been doing it, but um, so that's where the nickname comes from. There's actually, a really good local coffee shop here called Mule Town Coffee. Um, they're really good friends of ours, and I feel like they kind of like helped bring that nickname to the to the spotlight locally um, with their really good coffee shop. And then now there's a lot of little businesses called Mule Town this or that. So it's overplayed locally here quite a bit. Like the name Mule Town has definitely gotten overused, but like for us doing a pipe show where we're bringing people in from all over the country, if not the world to come to our pipe show, that doesn't really matter if it's overplayed or not. It's something that's memorable. It kind of catches people's attention. If we just call it the Columbia pipe show, then, you know, obviously people are going to think maybe Columbia, South Carolina or something else. So we, we wanted to, 
give it its own kind of unique brand. Very that we could specific. Have fun with. Yeah. You even made yeah, it. Yeah, we tattoo. created the. Yeah, there was a guy that got a tattoo. A meal town uh, tattoo. Yeah. What do you call it? What's his name? Who did your pipe stand? Uh, pistons and pipes. Uh, really? Pistons. Yeah. That's he got, that's hilarious. He got, uh, got the mule town tat- the uh, logo tattoo. Yeah, I get. He got the pipe smoking mule like tattooed while he was here at the show, like inside his arm. Yeah. That's hilarious. It's pretty, pretty great. It's hardcore. Yeah. But the show was, I mean, it was phenomenal. We had such a good time. I mean, this year was really difficult. Um, one thing that we didn't, you know, you know, talk about um, mentioning on this show was what was difficult about this year's show. The mule town show wasn't the difficult part. It was right after mule town. Um, Two weeks, in fact, after Mule Town, I had to go just this past weekend to the the trade show, the the Premium Cigar Association. That was in Vegas, show. right? Yes, which was in Vegas, and that usually happens like in July, and that's a huge event for us that we've got to take a lot of pipes to for retail stores. Yeah, and so we we came off of Mule Town, and then we went like almost straight into the big trade show out in Vegas, and then now I'm just just gotten back home and I'm starting my prep for, for Chicago. That's so let's, let's up. move into our sort of second segment with Pete Prevost and, and I've titled it prepping for Chicago as a retailer. It's you well, know, that's you br- very unique, Mike. Well, Pete brought it up. So, <laughs> wow. So, you know, Briarworks is a pipe retailer that said, Pete, uh, the upcoming Chicago pipe show is just, two weeks away as of this recording happy easter everybody this is airing on easter sunday yep. uh, the show is from april 11th through the 14th of 2024 and, and pete you I, you look tired man no no i kid <laughs> you look fantastic uh but it's like for you it's been one thing after another these last six or seven weeks right and as a pipe retailer take us through your your preparation process for a show like Chicago. It's the big one. Yeah. I mean, normally we would, we'd be in a situation where we already have like a, a stock of pipes that we're kind of just building off of, but because we just came back from the trade show and the way that we do things there is we take basically everything we have in stock and put it out there for, for retail stores to, to go through and buy. So we came back with, zero pipes uh we have no pipes. Yeah, start from scratch it's, yeah we have to start from scratch and so and you have a lot of new shapes too yeah we got a couple new shapes so yeah we so you're referring to all your scratch. you're referring to all your lines of pipes the briar works the moonshine like everything you're out gone hey you huh. probably could buy some from smoking pipes to take with you to <laughs> chicago he's got, a couple, he's got a couple of small little ones over there <laughs> he does yeah so no we're, we're we've been heavy in like preparation for Chicago and really Chicago is like the kind of show like it's unlike the trade show. It's, it's going to be more about connecting directly with the consumers, the pipe smokers, the collectors. So we don't need to have an insane amount of pipes on the table at the show. Really, if we can get together like a really nice selection of a hundred to 120 pipes to bring and like have a really good spread across the different shapes and finishes. That's really enough for a show like Chicago. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the goal is like, just, you know, but what would you put say your head down and make pipes? You know? Would you say the, the a pipe show like Chicago is just a completely different atmosphere in terms of the show you just came off of? hundred percent. Yeah. yeah the show it, that I just came from, is it's strictly a um, wholesale show. Yeah. So you have to be, you know, registered as a retailer to even come to the show, to shop. Um, so it's all wholesale. And then the other thing about it is the pipe side of it at that show is very small. I mean, you've got, we, we, we usually set up nearby where Laudisi um, is. So you've got Peterson, Savinelli, all right there, Cornell and Deal, us, You've got, you know, a couple of other distributors nearby that do pipes. But for the most part, that's a cigar show. I, I was, mean, was going to ask, like, exclusively a yeah, like, like percentage yeah. wise, what what is the pipe, pipe tobacco, like 10 percent of the show or even less? Maybe, maybe 10 percent. <laughs> maybe. Right. So how many pipes did you bring to Vegas that are gone? Um, 
So we, let's see, how many was it? Um, it, I think because after Mule Town, we weren't able to have as many as we would have liked. Normally, we would like to have about 400. Um, we had under 300 pipes. I can't remember the exact number, but um, not as many as we would have liked. So funny story. Um, usually, we do end up selling out at that show of pipes. Um, this year, uh, there's there's become a little bit of a rush to get to the table because retailers have learned that we do small production and it's not easy to get a regular stock of pipes from us throughout the year. So this year was, uh, was definitely our, our record. We, the show opened on Saturday morning at 10 AM and by 11, we were out of pipes. Holy crap. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. What a, what a great problem to have. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, it's definitely, even though if we had had a lot more pipes, we probably would have lasted through the day. But it's still cool either way. To, so so to you have a lot just, to do, a lot to pr- uh, prepare for within the next 10 to 12 days, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So how many, fact, pipes, um, how many pipes do you plan on bringing to Chicago for the table? Because like you uh, said, it's not a matter of hopefully, having hopefully, the same thing. Yeah. It's a matter of showing the shapes and the finishes that are available. I think the goal, I think the goal is like at least 100. At least okay. 100. Nice. So, so, like, so you and the boys are going to be busy over the next two weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially especially Bill Bill uh, Shalosky, who's one of our pipe makers here and a, and a very very talented handmade carver. Absolutely, he is the only person here that is his full time job is pipe finishing and pipe making. Yeah. So everybody else does a little bit of this or that. Like I mean, I do a million different random things, but like Micah, who works back here too, he uh, works up in the in the bar and lounge some. He does some stuff back here, some design. He does like a lot of our logo stuff. Um, so Bill has just been at it. I mean, Bill is, I would say the majority of the pipes that are going to be on our table that are Briarworks and Moonshine are going to be finished by Bill because he really is a, he's a, he's a machine. So you, you I, all, I can't you, talk highly enough about his talent. You all can get a Bill Slasky pipe pretty cheap then. <laughs> much, much cheaper than his own <laughs> cut and handmade stuff. Um, I mean, who, who else? Different, but yeah. No, yeah. I, I, that was a joke, by the way. Um, who else from Briarworks <laughs> is going to be joining you at the table in Chicago? Or are you going to be by yourself? Uh, so Micah Redmond will be there. Um, and then Brad uh, Emery, who's actually one of our um, – he works up in the retail store. And he does a lot of our wholesale. Um, he does a lot of our just sales during the day in the store. He'll be there with me as well. Um, and then we have some, I guess – they're former Briarworks uh, employees technically, but they're still very close friends of ours that uh, live back up in the Chicago area. Uh, Sam Adebayo and mm. Emily Adebayo. They sure. used to both work full time for oh, yeah. us. That's right. They're um, they're back up in the Woodstock, uh, Chicago area now. Um, and so they'll be there, but be they'll a, just be there kind of hanging out. With a us nice reunion for you guys. But, yeah. So, so you're going to have Briarworks branded pipes and I'm going to assume moonshine pipes. Um, That's right. And obviously you're, you're starting work on your own hand carved pipes. Do you, do you think Micah will yeah. have a couple of his pipes with him and Bill? I think Micah's well working well. on a couple. Yeah. Bill's got some, he was actually just here a little bit ago working on some handmaids. Um, I, my goal is to get, if I can get four pipes done, like between now and then that would be a miracle. So I'd be happy with four. I'm curious, Pete, you know, you started Briarworks so long ago. Did you visit any other, and this is a weird question, but did you visit any other like North American pipe shops, maybe Dr. Grabo before you started? Cause I, you know, one day Dr. Grabo had, they were churning out thousands of pipes every day. Not so much now. Right. Um, I'm wondering yeah, how, actually, how big Briarworks is compared to them now. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, honestly, I, I've never got to tour any other um, pipe factories, believe it or not. Okay. Like, I, I'd like to at some point. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be cool to How see. How often do you get to leave leave that shop? Um, I get. I, I'm. <laughs> I have a pretty decent schedule these days. I mean, this past several weeks, not so much. It's been yeah. a little bit chaotic. It's been a lot of evenings and weekends and stuff. But um, normally, I try to. I got, you know, I've got kids and they've got a lot going on and, and they're getting older and their bit lives are getting busier. So I try to just be here during the day, Monday through Friday, under normal circumstances. Um, 
the exception being all these shows getting clustered into a five week span this year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which makes it crazy for you and other people in the business for sure. Absolutely. But yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't got to visit any other factories yet. Um, I mean, I've been to plenty of other, uh, other shops of other handmade carvers and yeah. spent a lot of time in other, other shops. But, um, yeah, someday, I, you know, I think it would be really neat to go see, some of those places like the uh, Peterson factory or, or Chacombe or Savinelli or some of these kind of iconic um, legendary pipe factories. And I'm hoping this fall to actually make it up to, um, to Mir- Missouri Meerschaum's anniversary um, event that they're doing. Uh, and I think it's in September. Okay, I got an invite for that, but I don't think I'm going to get on a plane to, <laughs> to go. So. Again, <laughs> just Mike, just go on the plane that has the doors. I was watching a, a show on Netflix last night, Jay, and, and uh, I thought about you. It was uh, a plane crash episode because it's a, it was a medical show, and and it, the 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 crash they they went through the the scenario they went through was exactly what I went through, and I and I I almost was going to send you a clip of that, but I decided not to. Anyway, all right, so you're going to tell me my my brother's Netflix show? Uh, no. <laughs> Let's move on to the third part of our Pete Prevost episode, Battle of the Briar. And I should have, damn it, here's some great, here's some great music for Battle of the Briar. Oh my God, you Wait. and your bumpers, come on. Yeah, I, I should have, I should have brought some epic like gladiator music for Battle of the Briar, but I, I didn't. I was pressured for time. So Bill, last, Bill keeps talking about how he wants me to do like a training video. With like Eye of the Tiger playing. Oh, that would have been fantastic to do. <laughs> so last year at the Chicago Pipe Show, they introduced what I'm thinking will be a yearly event because they're having it again this year, Battle of the Briar. And the idea here is to take three established pipe makers, put them in a dirty pit and have them duke it out until one of them dies. Barehanded, mind you. Um, it was previously, it was previously, previously, it was previously called Pit Fighter. <laughs> You're going up against Dirk Heineman and David Huber now, right? That's correct. This That's year's right. competitors are Dirk Heineman and David Huber and, and our pal here, Pete Prevost. Pete, in listening back to the interview I did with you, you mentioned at some point uh, Jody Davis gave you some advice. I'm going to paraphrase this. Um, he said, you can make a pipe in a day, but but why would you when you have typically more than one pipe on the bench at a time, right? Take your time with these things. And now you're faced with making a pipe. And the idea here, folks, if you don't know what Battle of the Briar is, um, these three guys are going to be given all the same materials and an hour to make a pipe in front of a live audience. So well, now how, how much is pre done for you to begin with? Yeah, what are you starting what, with? There we yeah, go. From what I understand, because I didn't get to go watch it last year, I I, I kind of watched it from the smoking. You, tent. Let's face it, Pete. You like the rest of us, you didn't want to watch. Yeah. You didn't want to pay the extra twenty bucks to sit in a different room. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't even know it was happening somehow. <laughs> That's until, funny. And until he saw it showing it on the TV. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, "What's Battle of the Briar?" So now, now that it's happened once, people know what it is. But um, you know, I think it's basically a a, a pre drilled pipe kit essentially uh you've got a block with a with holes in it and then you've got some you know sort of machine cut stems to work with because that's really the only way you could do something like this i mean there's no way you could fully hand make especially hand cut a stem and do all of that in an hour but um i mean i guess you could i don't know what the quality would be but um yeah so i think the idea is everybody gets to pick a block out that's already got been drilled and then a stem that they're going to use to, to use on it. So um, it, uh, and then we if I'm, get- if I'm not mistaken and, and I'm sorry, I got a text from another very esteemed yeah. pipe maker while I was talking to you. Um, pre-made stems. Correct. That's what I understand. Yeah. Cause that's there's no way you could like, like an hour is not enough. No, no, right. not, not no. for, not for turning. I, I think and all of the stem. drilling aspects are removed from it because Right. Unless they had multiple lathes ready to go, I just don't see how you could the logistics of it. You know what? Work, if if you know, we had drill. Uh, a film that would detail these things, we would know, but we don't have that film. 
Well, Sheffy put together the film from last time. Hey, you know what? If if you all want to see Battle of the Briar, go watch Sheffy's YouTube video because it's tremendous. Now, but I'm I'm looking forward to this. I think it's, I think a, it's definitely year, an honor. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think last year you got the block it was pre-drilled, and you had a selection of stems to use for whatever shape that you were going to use. So you're going to pull a stem from the pile to use and then go. That's what I understand. I, I don't know a whole lot about it. I do know that um, they'll be providing the, um, like the 36 grits w- wheels for us to use and shape the actual pipe on. And then like a various, um, you know, different grit, you know, French wheels to do all of your sanding on files, sandpaper, They'll have all that stuff, I guess. I guess we don't bring anything. The only things that we're really even allowed to bring, I think, are like we can bring our own files if we want to. I don't know that we'd really need them um, or our own, you know, sandpaper maybe or something. But everything else we have to use that's provided. So not to give Dave or Dirk any kind of an edge because I don't think anybody really needs an edge. And no one will listen to this anyway. So Right. (laughs) <laughs> Normally, when you make a pipe, you're looking at the grain of the briar and what the briar wants to be. Now, you're not going to really have a choice in this. So are you just going with a shape regardless of the grain, regardless of the briar? I don't have any idea on what shape I would do just yet. I'll probably keep it relatively simple um, just because I feel like you've got an hour. I'd like to complete this pipe, so I don't want to get too complex. But I mean, I think Don't one of my thoughts. Try for too. more and do like a fugu. Right. You want to like bring out the blowfish? <laughs> for a they're whale? like, they're like, okay, time's up. Pete's still roughing his shape out over there. <laughs> Come done. on, you know you could do it. <laughs> yeah, but but we'll but see. I mean, you, uh, you're you're gonna have to look at it and you're gonna have to decide in, in, pretty quickly, instantly, like what shape. Yeah to approach because of what the briar says. Right. I mean, that has to happen. Yeah. And, and then you've got to probably be flexible because, you know, unlike typical pipe making here in my shop, when I've got all, all the time I want, I'm not going to have a sandblaster to use. Um, if I run into some flaws or something, I'm not going to be able to rusticate. It's going to have to be a smooth. It sounds like. So I think more than like, really caring about the grain orientation being exactly what I want it to be and the the shape being exactly what I want it to be. I'll have to be considering all the flaws that I might run into that as I start getting into it, um, that I'm going to have to try and work around. So that way I can at least kind of clean that up and not have, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of flaws in a pipe that's probably going to have to be a natural smooth. I'm guessing. I don't know. We'll see. Last huh. year they all did natural smooths. I don't think anybody even stained so, it. Last so, year. so that begs the question, like, cause you all don't know what kind of briar you're getting until you start shaping and cutting into it. Like what if one of you has a defective piece of briar? Cause you'll find out, that's won't you? Great. Well, that's see, that, that's question. why I'm asking, you know, is it a matter of just completing a pipe or is it a matter of completing it, a perfect pipe? Well, I don't think it's not going to be perfect in an hour. That's that's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a matter of completing the best pipe that you can. I think the the winner will be determined by who makes the shape and finish and kind of ticks as many boxes of like, (laughs) you know, good shape, good quality, all of that. And then I guess maybe whoever finishes it in the shortest amount of time. I don't know what all the qualifications are there. Here's how it should be determined. You ready, Pete? All three pipes should be passed around to about 10 guys and all 10 guys should smoke all three pipes for at least a few minutes each. And then they decide. There'll be a massive DNA swap and they'll decide who wins. Exactly. (laughs) I I kid, of course. It is. It is pretty cool. Um, I'm not a com- I'm not a competitive person. I I, I don't I, I've not been like I've played some sports when I was very young, but like I'm not a big like competition guy. Um, so I kind of like cringed at the idea of doing this, but it's all in good fun. Yeah. I know both of these pipe makers. I respect them a ton. They're both very talented. I think we're gonna have I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, are are you uh, any good at public speaking or doing things in front of a uh, you know, 
even a small audience. I'm, I'm kind of curious, like, are, will you be nervous doing this or will you just be the, the, the baseball pitcher on the mound throwing a no hitter where like everything is silent. You'll be so tuned in and so focused that nothing else exists. This may, this may totally change when I get up in front of everybody and start doing this, but I don't think I, I don't feel a lot of pressure to on this, like to uh, prove anything. So I think I, I'm going to have fun with it. And I've had a lot of experience being on stage in front of people. So, um, (laughs) and from my music background, so (laughs) I'm not, I'm not too like the idea of sitting in front of people and then watching me does not, does not intimidate me. Yeah. I was going to say, (laughs) I'm not worried about that. Now, but speaking, however, That's I will different. say, I don't like, I have had to do that um, even locally here for like chamber events or whatever. And they're like, hey, come and speak about Briarworks. Getting on a stage and just holding a microphone and talking, yeah. that's a little bit more nerve wracking. And I, it's, my hand shakes a little bit. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot different than what you're about to go so, through because so, you don't have so to say one, anything. Right. So now, yeah, well, I don't know. I think yeah. we should add that element to it. <laughs> Make the pipe while holding a microphone. I don't know. Yeah, we've talked to plenty of pipe makers who. Don't say too much, Jay. I think that's a dumb idea. <laughs> It'd hey, probably be pretty awkward. So, Pete, what's the quickest you've ever made a sellable pipe? Mm, like a full, like a full handmade pipe. Yeah, because that's what you're going to uh, be making. A, well, you know, not using. Yeah, but like even with a hand cut stem. Yeah. Um, um, probably. I don't know. I didn't time it, but I would say probably. Probably four hours, five hours with a hand cut stem, mm-hmm. something like that. But I mean, I, I would say most handmaids take me, if I were to be timing them, I would say anywhere from like six to 12 hours typically is what I spend on like a handmade pipe. And that's with the full hand cut stem and that's taking my time, no yeah. rush, you know. Um, but yeah, if I had to do, if I had to like time myself, um, making a handmade, which maybe I, maybe I should be doing and, uh, should start doing, maybe we'll see, uh, maybe, maybe I'll have another answer for you, uh, <laughs> between now and Chicago, because I had to crank out some pipes for the show. So, so ho- hopefully you took those, more those than an hour to do. Pipes. What's that Jay? Those are just tiny pipes. It's half the time. Yeah. Come on, Pete. Those are tiny pipes. You could do that in quite the opposite. That's the big misconception. <laughs> no, uh, it really kidding. is actually no, but for real, I, I, I think that that's a thing that um, generally is, is a misconception is that smaller pipes are, are faster and easier, but uh, mm. it's actually the opposite. That's not the um, truth. Yeah. So, so, so tedious with a little tiny pipe and so much room for error. There's, there's no room for error. I mean, there's just like, you have no, you can't mess up anything or it's ruined. Hey, hey Pete, with so, with so much materials at your fingertips there, have you thought about finding an, an old pre-made stem and an older piece of junk briar and putting kind of any practice time in, or you just don't have the time to do that right now with two weeks being yeah, away? I just don't really have the, other than just working on my handmaids and, and working on some factory stuff, I don't, and I don't even have a lot of time for the factory stuff right now, but other than that, I don't really have the option I wouldn't mind maybe even just getting one block and just pre-drilling it and then taking a factory stem and just, if I could, if I could find time to do that once, even just to finish out a pipe for myself to smoke, I think that would be kind of fun just to see, okay, can I even, can I even finish this thing in an hour? Like what it was looking like here. (laughs) Uh, Because I, I, I don't know, and I don't know if you brought this up. But are these are these briar blocks pre-drilled? You know, yeah, I believe so because I don't think they have a. I don't think they even have like a lathe and stuff. They might have a lathe there from when they do their pipe making class, but I don't know that there's anything for us to like drill bits and stuff for us to use to drill. Yeah, that there would, might be, but that I might think require that might require a whole lot more equipment in those small rooms. So it yeah. just sounds like maybe. Have to, You'd have to set up three of them. You'd have to have three yeah. entire setups, sanding yeah, wheels, the whole nine yards. Yeah. 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 So I'll probably assume there's only. And you're not going to oh. get a pipe done in an hour then. No. no. No, that's true. That's true. 
Well, we wish you the best of luck. Kit. I think it's basically a pipe kit. That's what that, it sounds that's like what I would. That's what I would assume as well. Kit. Yeah. And it's it's all going to yeah. be based on shaping and and all that other good stuff, right? Yeah. Are you nervous? Come on, you got to be a little bit nervous. I, I'm feeling good. I feel good. fine. I yeah. really do. I, I think it's like like I said, if there were if there were some like sort of high stakes here, maybe, and I, there was actually some you know something like that where I felt like some sort of life changing thing that I had on the line. But like, this is just fun. I think this is just a cool way of like, you know, bonding some pipe makers together under fire and just putting them in there and making them, you know, duke it out for an hour. I think (laughs) next time, next time there should be teams, teams of three. And then one drills, one shapes, and one does the stem. But they don't get the pieces together. I think this would be... I think this would be cool is like have, have something like that where you've got a team and you've got someone that's hand cutting a stem. I think that's, yep. I think that would be really cool. You guys are turning this into survivor. <laughs> get, get voted out of the shop because you did something stupid. Well, the best of luck to like you all day thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, an hour is um, it's really an unreasonable amount of time. Even if you're starting out yeah. with a pipe kit, it's like, wow. Yeah. Um, well, you also don't want to take away from their time with the show. Like you have Dirk coming yeah. from Germany and everything else. You don't want to spend an entire day just sitting there. That's true. And I no, think I think in the yeah, past I, they have had pipe making seminars as part of the show. So that's what it would kind of be yeah. like, right? Yeah. Well, the best of luck to you, Pete, because your competition, Dirk and David, are, you know, they're, they're qualified pipe makers, those guys are. Well, absolutely. For sure. Hey, Jay, before we wrap this up, Anything else for our pal Pete here? No, I'm excited. You know, every time I go and I see his table and stuff, there is one I'm looking for. I'm not going to tell anybody what it is I'm looking for. I'll I'll, I'll message you later. Is it one of those? Uh, you tell me. Is it one of those calabash pipes with a little magnetic top? No, 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 no. It's not. I remember when those came out. Yeah. I was like oh, in all of those. But no, there there is a different one that that I need to have. We actually talked about it. I think uh, in Vegas. Uh, so okay, well, shoot me a, shoot me a message. Remind me. So okay. Yeah, I'm sure in two weeks with everything he has going, Jay, he'll have it ready for you. Oh yeah, he oh. will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, that I'm is a very it. patient person. Uh, you are, and that is it for this episode of Pipe and Tamper. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, Pete. Um, we appreciate yeah, your time, you. buddy, and good good luck on the on the competition and. Um, everything else for that matter. So the socials for Briarworks are as follows at Briarworks on Instagram and briarworksusa.com for the website. Uh, I'm also going to recommend you guys subscribe to the Briarworks newsletter. I am. So you should be too. You'll get updates, new product announcements and deals. You might not otherwise get without that, that email Uh, Just scroll to the bottom of that website and put your email address in and click, click subscribe. It's super easy to do. Next episode, Jay and I should be back in a few weeks to do some sort of Chicago pipe show recap. This, of course, will be Jay's experience at the show and not mine because I will not be attending. This podcast can be heard worldwide on all podcast platforms such as Apple Podcasts. Let's get some music to take us out. Some Apple Podcasts, um, Amazon through Amazon Music, YouTube. You can tell Pete he likes his, his <laughs> Spotify and everywhere else you get podcasts from. Just search for Pipe and Tamper in your podcast app to either follow or subscribe. Thanks, you guys. And everyone who listened to this episode Thank you for tuning in uh, month after month because we don't do a whole lot of episodes anymore. And happy smokes, guys. Bye. See you guys later.